All right. Hi, everybody. This is a presentation here at uh, Drupal uh, High Performance Meetups at uh, the Venice Grind here in Los Angeles. And we have here Roger, Ali, Sasha, and Cristofano. We're going to set up a VPS with Drupal, Drush, and Virtualman. And to save some time in this, we've, we've already created a VPS on a hosting provider's website here called Chunkhost. Chunkhost is not... Uh, I'm not vouching for Chuck, Chunk Host, but it was the easiest thing to use for the for today's presentation. So we've already set up a a, uh, a VPS here. We've already been emailed our root password, and we're ready to log in to the VPS for the first time. And the IP address is here. So here I am in a terminal. This is this is how I set things up. You might want to do things differently. Uh, but this is using the tools that we have our, at, at our disposal today to get this done before the meetup is over. We've, we've just been having a great time here in Los Angeles, drinking coffee, eating tacos, and now it's time to uh, actually get to the part of the meetup that we all came here for. All right, so we are now logged into the VPS as root. The, uh, the name of this server it's called Zuja. Any Brazilians out there? We, we want to hear from you. Send us your comments. And uh, here is the install script for VirtualMin. VirtualMin is an open source control panel similar to Plesk and cPanel. And this installer that we're about to run will install Apache, MySQL, PHP, all the things that you would need for a Drupal site, and then some, including uh, support for subversion repositories, mailing lists, and all, all that other kind of stuff. So I've just copied and pasted the very same things that are here in, um, on, on this page, webmin.com slash vinstall.html. I'm just breezing right along. So now I'm running the install script. What I did was I I downloaded it, I made the install script executable, and now I'm going to uh, run it. And it just asked me if I was sure if I wanted to install it, and the answer is yes. Okay, so we don't actually know what the what the uh, the name of this server is going to be, so we're going to call it juja.healingtouch.org. We're not going to be setting up the DNS today, but if we were setting it up, we would take this IP address, which was emailed to us, and we would add that to uh, our, our DNS tool or control panel at our web host or wherever we end up doing that, and creating an A name record and pointing juja.healingtouch.org to this IP address. So what the installer is doing now is it's running these commands. It just ran apt-get. This is on a Debian 6 squeeze VPS. And it's installing all these things that we might be using on a site. So it's, it's including things like Apache and MySQL, but it's also including ClamAV, which is an antivirus scanner. It's including support for subversion. It, it's, it's installing all these things here, but not all of these things will be, be enabled or will necessarily be running on our server. We can, we can configure that down the road. For example, Postgres is not used by many Drupal developers and we'll have the option of, of leaving that on or off when we finish setting up virtual mode. In fact, this isn't even necessary for running Drupal. The virtual min install script is just installing itself and all the things that it needs to run like Apache and MySQL and PHP. So in another window I'm going to uh, log in and install Drush. Where is it? The password is right there. Oh, can't do it while well, there's something else running. Of course. So that's the that's the command to do it here on on Debian, at least I believe so. I still install it the old-fashioned way, and that's what we're going to do right now. 
So here is the Drush project page. I'm copying the link here. I'll, um, let's see, where am I? Okay, I'm still in the slash root directory. I'm going to create a scripts folder. I'm downloading Drush. Decompressing it. Deleting the tarball. So here in this folder is the Drush executable right here. I'm going to make this executable. And now I'm going to create a symlink that points to that Drush executable and place that symlink in user slash local slash bin. And I always get these, these uh, the symlink commands backwards, so we're going to just try this trial and error. And that seems to have worked. So let's try it. Oh, PHP hasn't been installed yet, so I'm getting ahead of myself. But this does show that the uh, the drush command that I just typed actually did work. This is the drush didn't work. For those of you following at home, uh, we're just we're just going to wait for this on our end here to finish up. Um, maybe we'll edit this video and cut the next couple minutes out. But does anybody have any questions so far? Nope. Any questions, Roger? So we're all we're all thumbs up here. Everything's good to go. So the speed of this installation process is going to depend on a number of factors, including uh, where your web host is located, uh, whether your web host uh, has has a mirror of your your um, um, the, the, the packages for your for your your package manager. It looks like Chunk Host is actually getting all of these from from, uh, well, we don't know yet. I'm not sure it shows where where it's actually getting these from. So the, the web host in this case doesn't have any cached copies locally, which would massively speed up this process. Right now, it's, it's still extracting the packages that it downloaded. That's why it says extracting dot, dot, I think we're going to cut these minutes out. <laughs> Skip a few dots. Yeah. There we go. All right. So now it's it's uh, it's configuring these different things. Oh, it's 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 installing virtualmin. Now that everything has been installed, that virtualmin expects to find, it's installing virtualmin. So virtualmin is going to be on the same server, but on a different port. So it's actually a, uh, it's over HTTPS, running on a server called MiniServe. MiniServe is similar to any other web server, but it, it's uh, it's what it's what virtualmin and webmin and usermin and cloudmin and all those all those uh, all those tools from that from that family of uh, control panels. Is used uh, uses to to be served over HTTPS, and it runs on port ten thousand. And it looks like we are good to go. So here is Virtualmin. Okay, so Virtualmin is actually a plugin for Webmin. Webmin is the open source control panel, and Virtualmin is a plugin for it. And Virtualmin lets you create virtual host configurations and, and databases and mailbox usernames and FTP users and all those things for specific domains and subdomains. Uh, I just call it virtualmin. That's, um, yeah, that's FYI. And here is the password that we got from Chunk Host. Uh, let's not remember that. So over here in the terminal, we see that everything is done. And now we're at the virtualmin installer or the setup wizard. 
and we only have 512 megabytes on this box. So we're not going to preload virtual min, we're not going to run uh, domain lookups. It means the server is going to run a little bit more slowly, but that's okay. The server is running slowly anyway. Let's not do any uh, virus scanning. Let's not do any spam handling either. And we do want MySQL. We don't need Postgres, so these are good defaults. I'm copying the root user password to my clipboard so that I can set the root user, uh, the root MySQL user to the same thing. This is optional, you can set it to whatever you want. Do, do you have a question? Okay. And uh, this is, yeah, that's fine. We're going to be running our own DNS server called bind. And if we wanted to, we could put in chunkhost.com and it's two dot chunkhost.com. Ah, well, this this actually isn't it hasn't been set up yet, so we're going to skip this check and just go forward. And now we're done. So we've just set up virtual min, and uh, let's let's re let's recheck the config. We might get an error or a warning, and uh, we'll need to do some further configuration. This is all dependent on the server image that your VPS host gave you and how it's set up. So it looks like everything just checked out just fine. So I'm going to create a, a virtual server. This is another word for a site or what cPanel calls a domain. Um, here I'll put in juja.healingtouch.com .org. .org. Oh, did I type uh, .com earlier as well? And then we're going to reuse the same password uh, I'm just going to create a, um, a Zhuja username. This is optional. If you don't select this, then you'll actually get a username called Healing Touch. So it's based on what the TLD is called. These are the features that are available, but we didn't actually enable virus scanning or, or spam filtering or anything. So we're going to leave those turned off. And we're going to set the name of our database here to Zhuja underscore dev. And here are some other options. If we wanted to put this on a different IP address, we could do that here. If uh, there, there were, if there was an, any need to, to, to change these settings, we could do that right now or go back to it later. Oops, I left that checked. So under here, same as real address, and the password is okay. So now it's going to create. Oh, what is going on? Let's just let's just accept the defaults and get going with our demo. Database name. So I'm going to start here at the beginning. So this is the the virtual server creation form and accept the defaults for everything. Ah, so there are still some plugins that aren't installed or, or configured yet. And these can be done these can be done here under features and plugins, but I'm gonna skip that part for now. So we're turning off mailman, turning off virus filtering, turning off spam filtering. Here is the uh, the password again. Oh, it looks like I was wrong. It used the name of the subdomain and not the domain name. I'm okay with being wrong as long as, long as I learn something. And scrolling down, it is now done. The frame here on the left-hand side uh, updated here. And if we wanted to, we could go in here and edit other things. If we went to virtualmin.com and found the Git plugin, we could install that. And then under features, there would be a new Git. Uh, what is it called? A uh, allow Git repositories uh, feature would be listed here. Um, 
there are all these different things we can do. We can change change uh, uh, the document root for the site right here. Uh, there are all kinds of things. So virtual min is both available in free and pro versions. This is the free version, and I just learned uh, this last weekend at Drupal Camp LA that the free version allows us to use SCGID for Apache and, and PHP, which to me is that was that was news to me. That's actually a really good thing and, and worth the price of admission. Did I mention that virtual min is free? Yeah. Okay. So we've we've just set up a virtual host, a database here called Zhuja. Uh, we have a an account here called anyone Zhuja. That's right. So we, we are using this name repeatedly. That's the database username. That's the Linux account username that's in slash home slash Zhuja. It, this is what's being used repeatedly. And just for convenience sake during this presentation, we're reusing the same password over and over and over uh, for the root user, for the root MySQL user, and also for the Zhuja user. This is surprisingly common, but it's not necessarily what you need to do for your business or for your, for your website. So now I'm going to try running Drush again. And Drush is successfully running. It is successfully installed. Let's, uh, let's go into, hmm, what should we do now? So let's go into the Juja user. That's what I thought. So this is not using bash. And down here at the end, I'm going to change this here to bash. I've just changed the shell that the Juju user is going to be using. Uh, this is optional. Uh, but I, I want to do this so that I can have a tab completion and, and other things that are available in bash. So now I'm logged in to the server as Juja. I'm going to cd to my directory, and here's what we have. We have we have a public HTML directory, and that's the document root for this website. Uh, please pardon the noise here. That's uh, the boys in blue heading somewhere. So I'm installing Drupal. Oh, yes, user Drupal. In Drush DL Drupal. Uh, so I need to um, make that readable by other users. I'm just going to do this as root. We'll forget best practices and do that another time. So the reason not to do this is because now all the files are going to be written uh, with the permissions that, that are only applicable for the root user. And that's not ideal for a lot of cases. Uh, it's how a lot of people run their sites. They don't want Apache to be able to write to itself. That's uh, arguably a best practice in server security. But, but here, we're just doing this today because it's fast. And now I'm going to move all of the Drupal stuff in here. Including the .hc access, and what else is in here? There's a git ignore. Whoops. So I'm just moving everything from the Drupal directory into the actual document root, which is public HTML. Okay. So now we have a Drupal site. Everything here is as you would expect to find in the document root of the Drupal site. And the way we're going to find out if this actually worked is by going to this site in a browser. And here it is. <laughs> so we used Drush to install Drupal itself. But the reason that we're seeing this page right now is because we used, in, in this case, the virtual min install script to install Apache and MySQL and all those things. And the password we're going to reuse everywhere is right here. And this is telling us that we have to do a little work first to, um, 
to make this site installable. Also, there are some things missing. So it's missing the GD image library. It's, uh, uh, it's not finding the files directory, and the settings.php is not found. So let's go fix these things. Okay. Shum, Fuja, Fuja files. So now the files directory is writable by the Fuja user, and that means that Apache will also be able to write to this folder. And then, because we're still logged in as root, we need to install some other things too. So while we're at it, we're going to install APC. And um, what is it? Is it PHP GD or is it just GD? Are you installing the app today? Yeah. Oh, just the, uh, GD. GD? Yeah. Let's well, try that. although there might be a oh, package itself with GD. But. It'd help if I were, type the word install. Okay, so it's installing PHP dash APC, but not GD. So, PHP GD. or PHP 5 GD, maybe. I, I don't remember the last time I installed this. There it is, PHP 5 dash GD. Just trial and error. Works every time. And now it's installing that. And we have APC installed. We have... Uh, GD installed, the settings.php is uh, now, uh, it's, it's where Drupal expects to find it, and it's not writable. Let's make that writable. And uh, the file system is, is also writable. It, the file system meaning the site's default files directory. I am reloading the page, and we now have the, the form that we're expecting to find. The name of the database is Zhuja, the username is Zhuja, and the password is now in there. So here we go. All right, so we now have a site set up. We're going to uh, create some more settings here. Um, admin info, come on. Password, sure. Let's just use the same thing everywhere. Ah, thanks. Okay, and. Um, Let's just try to keep the load on the server as light as possible for now. I'm turning off automatic updates. This is okay to do uh, sometimes. It, it depends on, on how you, uh, what side of the bed you wake up on. Right. Oh, it really doesn't like IP addresses. How about that? Healing touch work. So for those of you watching at home, we now have a uh, some weird stuff going on in the screen. That's because uh, the sun just set here in Los Angeles and I have a program that's stripping out all the blue out of the display. There we go. Now uh, the reason for that is that this program flux uh, re reduces eye strain when when looking at the screen at night. It's really cool, especially when you run two copies of the program at once. As uh, as David at Media Temple told me, if you run two copies at the same time, It'll strip out the green too, <laughs> and the screen turns red, and it looks like you're on Mars. Oops, I need to change this stuff. Yeah. I actually use that one when I go to telescope parties. A a red light. The filter on your screen that would, that would actually help with that. Time. That would help. Yeah. I, yeah. Do you go to a lot of telescope parties? Sometimes. Oh, that's so cool. People, well, people. I'm part of the LA Astronomy Club. Yeah. Yeah. I actually so go. Oh, there you go. Here's yeah. a red light filter as well. Yeah. As well. <laughs> yeah. Some people will actually just paste a red thing on their screen. Yeah. Yeah. You can get uh, basically cellophane. Yeah. It's cheaper. That's for sure.
And it's, some, it's called, uh, it's some kind of gel, it's a gel filter. Okay, all right, so we've just installed Drupal. Congratulations, and here's our site. So that's, that's it, right? Are we done? Cristofano, you hired. All right, thank you, Sasha. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a site that we're going to give to Sasha. It's running on his VPS. We now have Virtual Min running here. No, not here. Not here. We have Virtual Min running here. So this is an open source control panel. It's free, it's modular, it's powerful. And just so you know, I don't know half the things that this thing does. There are settings and pages and buttons and forms and links that, that I just I don't necessarily know what they all mean until I go look it up. Um, so this is Webmin. Uh, this will let you set up things like cron. So cron is here under scheduled cron jobs. Again, this is on the, the Webmin side of this, of this page, not the virtual Min side. So Webmin here has uh, scheduled cron jobs. If you wanted to install new software, you can go to software packages and install them here. Uh, so let's go set up cron. Uh, does anyone remember where that is? I need to get the key right here. So what I've just done here is on the status report, I'm copying this link, which includes this authentication token. So now we can run cron the Drupal 7 way. Uh, create a new cron job. I'm going to run this as, as the Zhuja user on the file system. Remember, when we created this domain, the Zhuja user was created, and all that, all, the entire Drupal site and everything is in the Zhuja user's home folder. So I'm running this as Zhuja. Here is the command. That's not the command. Uh, how about we do wget and then what is it? wget dash dash quiet dev null. And there's some other things we can put in there too. But we're going to make this run every hour. If we wanted to, we could even make it run every every minute if we, if we wanted. Just by clicking all these things and multi selecting. This would be good on a development machine, not necessarily a, a production <coughs> machine. But what we're going to do is we're actually just going to run it every hour. So uh, if I wanted to do it every five minutes, every 10 minutes, or every, if you want to do it on odd numbers, you would select this checkbox or this radio button and then make make sure you have what you what you want selected, selected here. But we're going to make it hourly. I suppose I should have actually checked to make sure this command works. I forget if dash dash quiet is a wget command or a curl command. And then cron just ran nine seconds ago. So that command works just fine. So now cron is running. This is something that's surprisingly hard to do. Depending on your system, it's surprisingly easy to forget to do in the first place. And now that we have um, the site set up, I'm going to go back to the public HTML folder. Everything here is is pretty much owned by root. I, I don't I don't want that. So I'm going to change all of this stuff to Juja recursively, and we're done. So now. Everything is owned by Zhuja. Mm -hmm. So now you can you can actually SSH in as the Zhuja user. You can give that username and password combination to a client or to a friend that you're working on the site with without giving them the root username and password. Unfortunately, these accounts share the same password. So you, you can change that at any time you want. And let's see what else we have here. Here on the status report, it says that GD is installed, and everything's good, except that the updates aren't running. And that's fine. We can turn that on anytime we want. And here is the PHP info. Let's see if APC is, uh, is running. So here's APC. That was installed with just one command. I think we're done. There are a whole bunch of other things that we can do.
but it is now 7.58, and our meetup ends in two minutes. More importantly, we get kicked out in two minutes. So thanks for watching from home. Uh, leave any comments and questions you have uh, wherever you find this video. And thanks again to Sasha, Roger, Ali, and this is Christofano. Thank you, Christofano. Thank you.